watching. Namaskar everyone. My name is Gopika and I'll be your MC for the closing session of this wonderful three-day long Threads Conference 2019. Thank you so much, the wonderful audience. It's really an honor that you all are here for this conference because the way this conference was designed, the way, the reason why this conference came up, you all made it possible together. It's been an amazing journey, and the last two days have enlightened us with so much knowledge, information that has been shared by our speakers who are very successful in their respective fields and who have enriched the American tapestry with their diverse and far-ranging contributions. They have helped us to achieve the aim of Threads 2019, and that was to bring together all Hindu Americans, and it doesn't matter whether they are thinkers or educators, writers, scientists, technologists, uh, entrepreneurs, business leaders, it's a long list. But they are here together on this platform to share their story, to, to share their journey, to celebrate the achievements, and of course, our future goal, where we all come together and decide where do we go next from here? Explore the ideas, how can we go to the next level? And the next level, there is no end to it. We all can do this, we have been doing this, and all Hindu Americans all over the world have proved. Doesn't matter whether we travel to different countries, you know, it's, it has been an amazing journey and we all can do this together. So thank you so much for all your support. And this is just step one. We have a lot to do and definitely looking forward to many, many, many more. Thank you so much, Sanjayji, for starting this initiative. So now, let's start our closing session. And this I would call a grand finale because we have something that you have been waiting for. So I would like to invite our first keynote speaker, Mr. Tahir Goraji, on the stage, please. Mr. Tahir Gora is an author, a journalist, and political activist. He is a founder of Canadian Thinkers Forum and TAG TV channel. Some of his shows in Urdu Hindi languages have received over 100 million views in Southeast Asia. He is a fierce critic of Islamist jihadi ideology. He is co-author of book Submission, Threats of Political Islam to Canada and the United States. His novel, Rang Mehal, portrays dilemma of multiculturalism in the West. He is working on a new novel that is depicting ISI role in terrorism in Afghanistan, Kashmir, and around the globe. Tahir is a strong proponent of speech. He calls himself a Hindu born in Muslim faith and a Canadian Punjabi of Indian heritage born in political Pakistan.
I would like to call Mr. Tahir Goraji and continue, please. Thank you very much. I really appreciate for this introduction. I'm very grateful for the organizers and the uh, delegates in this conference. I would like to reflect on a couple of uh, key issues in terms of my own identity quest. I have a few notes with me. Uh, I call myself a Hindu born in Muslim faith. I'm, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for this understanding. I'm also a Canadian Punjabi of Bharti heritage, <clears throat> born in political Pakistan. As I identify myself a son of Dharma, I often become saddened when I find demonization of dharma, Hinduism, and my Bharti civilization and heritage in the hands of our own North American mainstream media, which is mainly being operated by hollow and shallow, extreme left-leaned so-called journalists. It's happening more so in context of BJP's consecutive two governments, we often hear the negative connotation such as right-wing Hindu nationalist government or Hindutva government, etc., or recent extreme rhetoric by Pakistan's short-sighted Prime Minister Imran Khan when he equates BJP RSS with Nazis. We, the people of Dharma, have contributed enormously. In our beloved adopted countries, United States of America and Canada, but we haven't done anything substantially yet in terms of countering those propagandas. We need to enlighten mainstream media that Hindu nationalists or Hindutva sentiments are positive and peaceful vibrations. Our Hindu leadership should come up with our own parallel media outlets to counter this negative propaganda. Now let me share my own journey towards Dharma. My quest for identity begins with who am I? It is hard to get an answer of such a simple question if you were born in Pakistan. Because Pakistan, because Pakistani society, our diaspora, does not offer you a straight and true answer in this regard, rather leads you to a fake path of identity. Pakistan imposes Muslim ummah identity on you, which is not a heritage of any Muslim on this planet. Islam is just one of the three Abrahamic religions. It is not anyone's race or heritage. So then who am I? I get answer not through Pakistani fake history books or through politics, rather through literature, music, art, and intellectual discourse. Finally, I was able to identify myself as a Bharti. This revelation was transferred to me by gurus such as Bulle Shah, Kabir Das, Manto, Krishan Chandar, and Ram Lal. On one hand, I was lucky enough to discover my Bharti identity in very early stage of my life, and on the other hand, Bulle Shah revealed to me, quote, from first to last, I searched myself. None other did I succeed in knowing. I know not who am I. In fact, this paradox, unquote, 
In fact, this paradox leads one to know about oneself or to know nothing about oneself. Those are the two sides of a coin. That is the ultimate freedom. The spiritual saga of Bharat lies in both sides of a coin, to know and to know nothing. Both aspects fit well in any open society, so our beloved Americas are the natural breeding grounds of Bharti intellectual discourse as well as Bharti way of life. And now, how do I relate my Indianness with North Americas? Of course, through blending my true Bharti heritage in an environment of free world, there is no clash between a free world and a Bharti soul. Even being born in political Pakistan and Muslim faith family, one can set oneself free from all superficial political affiliations and feel like a bird flown to North America. I call myself a Hindu born in Muslim faith because we all are Hindus no matter what faith club we belong to. <laughs> this equation seems very complex, but it is very simple as well, especially for those who are honest within themselves. In search of my identity, my basic question to myself was, what is the name of my dharti homeland? Of course, Bharat. Then what is Pakistan? Of course, a carved out part of the Bharat, an amputated part of the Bharat. Pakistan is not a nation. Pakistan is not a civilization. Pakistan is not anyone's heritage. And Pakistan is not my heritage either. My heritage is Bharat. My motherland is Bharat. Initially, I took the creation of Pakistan as a blunder of history in my early childhood perception around mid-70s. The books, though, in my primary and then high school were filled of such so much hatred and derogatory remarks against my own heritage. The hatred, that hatred against my being enraged and saddened me so much that I became a regular listener to Muhammad Rafi, Mukesh, Manna Dev, Yasudas, Sad Melodies. Like most Pakistanis, I became a fan of Hindi movies that always delivered me a subtle message to fight against injustice and inhumanity. I started experiencing hatred and intolerance against my own heritage day and night through Pakistani media, textbooks, and ruling classes. So the music and cinematography gave me a power to reject that very hatred. Later, I was more empowered through literature in order to fight this hatred against my own being. Not all literature helped empower me. Some literature, again, was and is a propaganda literature used by Islamist mindsets, but some literature was true in its spirit. As Bullesha said, quote, let us sit together. We are not sinners, are pure. What is sin and what is nobility? This I don't know. Unquote. Then a great Sadat Hassan Manto's short stories came onto my radar. A famous story, Toba Tek Singh, goes on. Two or three years after partition, the government of Pakistan and India decided to exchange lunatics in the same way that they had exchanged civilian prisoners. There was one Muslim lunatic who had read the newspaper every day for 12 years. One of his friends asked him, Malvi Sahab, what is Pakistan? After careful thought, he replied, it is a place in India where they make razors. One Sikh lunatic asked another Sikh, Sadarji, why are they sending us to India? We don't know even, we don't even speak the language. All they knew was that there was a man named Muhammad Ali Jana 
whom people called the Qaeda Azam, he had made a separate country for the Muslims called Pakistan. They had no idea where it was or what its boundaries might be. This is why all the lunatics who had not entirely lost their senses were perplexed as to whether they were in Pakistan or India. If they were in India, then where was Pakistan? If they were in Pakistan, then how was it that the place where they lived had until recently been known as India? One lunatic got so involved in this India-Pakistan question that he became even crazier. One day he climbed a tree and sat on one of its branches for two hours, lecturing without pause on the complex issues of partition. When the guards told him to come down, he climbed higher, where when they tried to frighten him with threats, he replied, I will live neither in India nor in Pakistan. I will live in this tree right here. There was one fat Muslim lunatic from Chiniot who had been an enthusiastic Muslim League activist. He used to wash 15 or 16 times a day, but abandoned the habit overnight. His name was Muhammad Ali. One day he announced that he was the Qaeda Azam, Muhammad Ali Jannah. Seeing this, a Sikh lunatic declared himself to be a master Tara Singh. There was also a young Hindu lawyer from Lahore who had gone mad over an unhappy love affair. He was distressed to hear that Amritsar was now in India because, he, because his beloved was a Hindu girl from that city. Although she had rejected him, he had not forgotten her after losing his mind. For this reason, he cursed the Muslim leaders who had split India into two parts so that his beloved remained Indian while he became Pakistani. There was another lunatic in that madhouse who thought he was God. One day, Bushan Singh asked him where Toba Tek Singh was in Pakistan or India. He replied, neither, because I haven't yet decided where to put it. Bushan Singh begged this God to resolve the status of Toba Tek Singh and thus end his purpose. Complexity. A few days before the day of the exchange, one of Bhushan Singh's Muslim friends came to visit from Toba, from Toba Teg Singh. This man had never visited the madhouse before. Seeing him, Bhushan Singh turned abruptly and started walking away, but the guard stopped him. He has come to visit you. It's your friend Fazluddin, the guard said. Glancing at Fazluddin, Bushan Singh muttered a bit. Fazluddin advanced and took him by the elbow. All your relatives have gone safely to India. I helped them as much as I could. Bushan Singh said nothing. Fazluddin continued. They asked me to make sure you were all right. Now I hear that you are going to India. Give my salams to Brother Balbir Singh and Brother Vadada Singh and to Sister Imrat Kaur. Tell Brother Balbir Singh that I'm doing fine. Bhushan Singh handed the package over to the guard. Where is Toba Tek Singh? He asked. Fazluddin was taken aback. Toba Tek Singh? Where is it? It is where it has always been, he replied. In Pakistan? are in India. Bushan Singh persisted. Fazluddin became flustered. Is in India. No, no, Pakistan. When Bushan Singh's turn came to be entered in the registered, he spoke to the official in charge. Where is Toba Tek Singh? He asked. Is it in Pakistan or India? The official laughed. It is in Pakistan, he replied. Hearing this, Bushan Singh leaped back and ran to where his remaining companions stood waiting. 
The Pakistani guards caught him and tried to bring him back to the crossing point, but he refused to go. Because he was harmless, the guards let him stand right where he was while they got on with their work. He was quiet all night, but just before sunrise, he screamed. Officials came running from all sides. He was laying down on the ground. India was on one side behind a barbed wire fence. Pakistan was on the other side behind another fence. Toba Tek Singh lay in the middle on a piece of land that had no name. Manto's story ends here, but my story is a never-ending story. Like all fellows of Dharma origin in this room and millions more across Americas, we are in this piece of land that got a name and that is attached with our freedoms and aspirations. Here I could recall Zafar Iqbal's couplet in Urdu, Maze ki baat hai, usko bhajan sikhate hain, jo khud hi murti hai, aur khud hi mandar hai. It is interesting we teach bhajan to a special one, whom herself is a temple and whom herself is a goddess. So our Americas are our temples as well as our goddess. Thank you very much. So our next keynote speaker, Sri Darshak Hathiji, he is a motivational speaker, mentor and master trainer, coach for soft skills. He's the international director of Art of Living Foundation. He has traveled extensively across the world to conduct corporate and government executive training programs. He's been a bridge between the organizational goals and political and social establishments in India. He comes with over three decades of experience in international relations, business, finance, executive training, community outreach, social and development sectors. I would like to call Sri Darshak Hathiji now. Shuddhagyane kamurtaye Nirmalaya prashantaya Dakshina murtaye namaha My brothers and sisters of America, this is how one of the monks from India, Swami Vivekananda, addressed the August gathering of USA in 126 years before. I think that was the thread which he has created, and we are all part of it. And then there are so many other masters who came in the same tradition and gave the same message, decoded the Hindu way of living, the Vedic Hindu way of living. The message which Swami Vivekananda gave 126 years before is so relevant even in the today's modern context. Whether it is a religious tolerance, solidarity, brotherhood, or knowing about the self, health. So many speakers spoke about this in this August gathering. So my subject is spirituality and technology. I think uh, we have reached to a, a milestone. You know that creation 
has its own course. We have reached to a milestone where we have done so much of technological innovation. In fact, if you see, technology is nothing but extension of our body. We have got the best camera and we created the cameras. Yeah, Best audio device, visual device, speech device, we created all of that. We got the best network system and we created the network system. That was not enough and we created the CPU. And finally, AI. Now, in all the other technology, we know the focal points. We know the focal point of camera and audio device and speech device. How much we know about the mind? Hardly 7%, 8%. So we are trying to create something out of unknown, and it can go in any direction. Yeah? But what is beyond AI? We don't even know much about our mind. And if the human, the mankind wants to go further, they need to know a little bit about the consciousness. We need to blend the science with the consciousness. And it was not a new concept in Vedic Hindu tradition. Our rishis were scientists. They have done a lot of invention without a modern technology, which was not carried forward because of thousands of years of slavery in India, and all the documents were lost. And somehow, we didn't practice it. But it is still available to us. And I, if I would say that, some of the speakers before also said that, you know, the consciousness has the power to create the matter. Matter cannot create the consciousness. So we know about it. And what is relevant in today's modern, digitally driven society, I would say. I was in a Bay Area, and once I was traveling in the, in the car on the highway, and suddenly I saw a board are you suffering from FOMO? And I was a little surprised that, what is this FOMO? I've never heard about this. And then I did research, and I came to know so many other abbreviations, the FOMO and FOBO and 4G and MOMO. And it really opened up a new dimension for me. So this is what our young generation is experiencing. Because we have created a parallel world, a digital world, I would say. And everybody is hooked to it. Whether you want it or not, we are all are hooked to it. And then with the technology comes all the other things. If you are not using technology properly, then it creates so many challenges for the individuals, for the families, and for the society. And this is what we are experiencing. So all the technology is for our outer comfort. Yes, it gives us comfort. And we want to be comfortable, want to be more happy in our life. But what about the inner comfort? We are constantly upgrading our technologies, putting our money and time and our resources. How much we have upgraded our inner technology? I would say a human technology. How much we know about it? And that is where the disconnect happens. We have created so much outer comfort. What about the inner comforts? And when individuals are not experiencing that inner comfort, that's where all the problem starts with the body and mind. We are talking about physical health, mental health, emotional health, so also the social health. All that challenges that we see today, where does it come from? From the human mind. And what is the solution? So ancient people, they knew about this, because mind works with the same principles wherever they are. Whoever is there in the world, at whatever level, the principles are all the same. And how to manage that mind? It was known to us thousands of years before. So what this knowledge can contribute? You know, so many speakers spoke in this gathering from the diverse background, from the political background, the economical background, from the science. And there is a common thread. When we talk about the Hindus, when we talk about spirituality, there is no difference, I would say. The Vedic knowledge, the Hindu knowledge, or the spirituality, it's all, I would say, it's, it's all coming from the same roots. And it is connecting to every individual in the society. So if you are in the finance, you're talking about the fintech, but so also there are issues of ethics, 
there are issues of corruption and oralities and practices, you need understanding. If you're talking about the society, there is a problem with the gender equality and economical disparity and all the other things, crime and racism. What is the solution? The solution is with the spirituality, mm -hmm. with this Hindu knowledge. You talk about the individual challenges, so many kind of mental health issues. Why? Because we have not taught our generations how to manage it. So there is always a prevention, and these people knew about this. We need to do a prevention thing, not only for the individuals, but also for the society. So they came out with all the principles, and these principles are beyond the time and space. So what Swami Vivekananda said, or all the rishis who said thousands of years before, it is so relevant in today's life also. Because it's for the benefit of the mankind. Hmm? So Hindus have contributed so much in this country. Just 0.7% population of America. How they've exhaled, how they've reached out to that level. There must be some way of living, some principle which is guiding them. So I think for me, being a Hindu, it is not a religion for me. It is in my genes. The way I think, the way I behave, the way I act with my, my brothers, my sisters, my fellow members, and with the society at large. I know how to live with a cooperative coexistence, with, with the harmony with the people. I don't believe in converting the people from the faith and religion. I believe in giving equal rights to them. That's why the India being a cradle of all the civilization, we have accepted the world, religions and faith. Because I believe in cooperative coexistence. We are not living all alone by ourselves. We are not an independent individual on this planet. We are interdependent. We are sharing this planet with seven billion people. We are using the same breath, same air. But when I give priority to all my identities, other than my human identity, I create a difference. So no two human beings are same, not even in the family. But rather than fighting on the differences and diversity, we can celebrate the diversity. That's what I've learned being a Hindu. I believe in conscious consumption of the nature, not exploitation of the nature. This was known to me thousands of years before. And this is what is creating issues. We talk about the climate change and you know, environmental issue, but where is that reverence for the nature, which is very much there in this tradition, respecting the river, respecting the trees, respecting the earth, everything is just there in my nature. So what I have learned thousands of years, since thousands of years, it has become part of my living. And this is what I carry wherever I go. So this globalization concept is not new. People in India, in that tradition, they have globalized the world with their wisdom. That's why so many people came to India to learn the Vedic wisdom from China and from Europe and different parts of the world. In the first generation, in the first century, India's GDP was 25% of the world GDP with all their products, with the technology. So that knowledge, that understanding, that wisdom we are carrying with her wherever we go in the world and we contribute to that part of the world, whether it is the USA or Europe or Australia, any part of the world. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what we need to take it to our next generation. Mm -hmm. And this is a need of the hour. Yeah? If the individuals are not healthy and happy, if the society is not healthy and happy, we can have n number of innovation and technological advancement, it doesn't help. That is where we need these values, this way of living, which can create a better society. And we are, we have inherited this, we are not, we have not inherited this planet from our previous generation, but we are indebted to our next generation. They will ask the questions that you had a time what did you do for us? What kind of society you have created for us? 
So we are answerable to our next generation. And that is why I would say the spirituality should always go hands in hand with the technological advancement. That's the need of the hour. So I'm so happy that the Vishwa Hindu Parishad, the World Council of Hindus have taken this initiative to glorify, to decode the Hindu way of living to this country. And this country is so, so vibrant. People come here with the American dream. There are achievers, though they come from all parts of the world. So like, you, like India, the U.S. has also given that land, that possibility to the people. They have the best universities, the best technologies. Everything is here. And how we have merged with them, how we have contributed with them, this is an example in itself. So the relation between India and America or all the other countries, it proves that you know, we have improved our trades and our bilateral relationships and everything. People have contributed to the politics of the USA. So that openness of this country, the best values, the best practices, you know, support to the rights and equalities, if it goes with the Hindu way of living, I think we can create much better society for our future. Mm -hmm. So with these few words, I would like to extend all my best wishes to the organization, to all the people who have come here to support this wonderful cause. Wish you all the best, and together we can do something better for our society. Jai Guru. Thank you so much, Shri Darsha Khatiji, for teaching us that we really need to value our values and why we need to change our way of living, not only for, our, for ourselves, but for our next generation ahead. At this point, I would really, really thank uh, Mr. Tahir Goraji, our first keynote speaker. Shri Darshak Hathiji for sharing your ideas, for enlightening us with this knowledge that we all need to know, we need to remember these things. Sometimes we just forget, but we need to remember all this. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's an honor that you are here with us, and we thank you from the bottom of our heart. <laughs> so next, I would like to call um, Mr. Neeraj Kumarji and Mahapulaji, let me introduce. Mahapula is a senior member of World Hindu Council of America. She's also a senior sales leader at a Boston-based intelligent edge platform service provider focused on providing enterprises the ability to deliver a rich digital customer experience through the power of the platform. Maha is often called upon to lead and drive business transformation initiatives in various capacities. Maha is on the board of directors of Chinmay Mission West, the Apex body in North America, running over 49 centers in North America where children and adults of all ages and backgrounds engage in learning about the rich cultural heritage of India. Mr. Neeraj Kumar is also a senior member of World Hindu Council of America. He is a management consultant, business developer, and thought capital leader in technology and telecommunications centers. He has deep experience in counseling CX, CX, CXOs and business executives on areas of corporate growth and operational strategies. He is frequently called upon to develop executable paths to digital business transformation and emerging technologies. He's an innovative thinker, writer, and 
evangelist for the mobile telecom and internet of things businesses. I would like to call Mr. Neeraj Kumar and Mahaji, please. All right, we are going to do this together and just save yourself some save you some time. And my laptop just decided to reboot. Interesting. <laughs> Don't rely on technology. Oh no, it didn't. Actually, I'll tell you a little bit of what happened. I was running around this morning, quite frantic, uh, because I had taken copious notes from every panel. I had like 10, uh, 10 to twelve uh, notepads full of notes, takeaways, action items action items, and a whole lot of things from yesterday. And then I promptly lost it all. <laughs> so this morning I was sitting and furiously trying to recall all the stuff that had happened uh, yesterday. It wasn't too difficult because every panel had left a inedible uh, mark uh, on, you know, uh, on our understanding. So uh, what we are going to do, Niraji and I, are going to tag team. Our job now over the next 10 to 15 minutes is to walk you through each of the panels and uh, give you some closing remarks and any commentary or key takeaway from each of the panels. So we're going to tag team and uh, take one panel at a time. I'm sure that there will be not a lot of, I mean, we won't be able to cover every aspect of each panel, um, but uh, we'll get to a quick summary of that. And that's our job over the next 10 to 15 minutes. Is that okay? All right. So um, I'm going to kick it off. Um, very interesting. All right. So what do you think of the conference? <laughs> no, not enough en energy. All right. I was actually going to make you all stand up and do some stretching, but uh, given that we had a late start, so this is good enough. Um, so let's start with the beginning, right? Um, for us, it's an honor, uh, and I know Nirji will agree with me, is that it's an honor to actually close out a conference of this magnitude. Uh, because just like you, and I don't know if you agree with me, I, had, uh, I did not know what to expect from the conference. I knew that it was going to be momentous. It was the first of its kind. Uh, the panel looked amazing. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, in my past experience, people don't show up. They make a commitment and sometimes they don't show up. So I was a bit nervous as well because of the esteemed nature of the panelists and folks that were committed to be here. And I can tell you that every one of them, you know, true to the Bharat style, showed up and showed up and did a phenomenal job. So, and, and I think that that, that, that uh, is a testament to the leadership that uh, Abhiyaji, Sanjayji, and JG have brought to the conference. So my thank you to them for making this a reality. Yeah. Okay, so, um, you know, the way we are going to do this closing is we'll talk about what happened on Friday. We'll talk about what happened in the ensuing two days. And then we'll talk about what our panelists have asked us to do as we keep going out in the future. Because this cannot be a one and done deal. So when we started this discussion on Friday, I was sitting somewhere there. I always sit close to the door. It's a practice that I developed in my engineering college. I refined it during business school. So I was somewhere there. And, uh, you know, Sanjayji talked about, he said, you know, there is an audacious goal for this conference. And that is to tell the story of millions of Hindu Americans who have come to this country. And as I sat there, I kind of smirked and I said, Wow, that's not an audacious goal. That's an Herculean goal. It's an impossible goal. Look at the paths we take. Look at the journeys. Look at the range of things we do. So I said, that's absolutely not possible. That's, that's impossible. But look what happened. Look what happened on Friday evening. Look what happened on Saturday. And look what happened in today. So now we will take you through a bit of a journey, and then we'll ask you a simple question. Did we meet that audacious goal and challenge that Sanjayji talked about? And did we have enough 
of the fo- food for our body, for our mind, and our soul that Jaiji talked about. So let's go. All right. Um, I, uh, I heard a couple of our speakers talk about this bully pulpit, right? And I did not think that anyone that, when the panel and Neeraji will agree to this, is that we didn't find anyone standing in the bully pulpit of Hindutva. Uh, it was not a sermon on the mount. It was not someone yelling at from the top of the building, you know, listen, like, we have invented the zero. We've got the Artha Shastra. We know all about flying from the age of Ramayana. I didn't find one reference to that. That sort of set the tone for what it was. So the common thread through the entire conference, starting from Friday, was about the pursuit of happiness and comfort. Uh, and at the three levels that Neeraji talked about, the body, mind, and intellect. And Sanatana and Dharma uh, defines them, and I heard another speaker this morning talk about it as the four purusharthas, right? Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. And uh, as the, the foundation of the substratum that Artha, Kama, and Moksha are based on is Dharma. So that theme was complete. It was permeated every panel starting from Friday. So... Um, you know, we can take every panel as it goes, and we'll start with the first one, which was about the arts, uh, and if you Neeraj wants to quick summary. <clears throat> so, art and literature, when I think about that panel, and I'll talk about, you know, two or three key words that I got, that, that the takeaways that I got, it, the best way I can describe it is it was such an immersive experience. I had personally never thought about art and literature and music in that way. The intersection and the personal stories that we got. You know, I was absolutely fascinated when I heard one of the panelists talking about how she started her training in music by singing lullabies to her baby. That was an incredible description of the personal travails, response, challenges that you pick up when you cross across the border, you take your training in India, and then you apply to the audiences here. So that was absolutely incredible. The other thing I learned in that panel discussion was the sheer creativity. And I'm talking not about creativity in terms of creating the content. I'm talking about the creativity that happened when our panelists were talking about intersection of music with medicine. That was something that I never thought about. I never thought about how music could be actually therapeutic for pedi- in pediatrics and so on. So that creativity that I saw, the intersection, the interaction, was absolutely great in that. You, you agree with that? Absolutely, huh? absolutely. All right. Yeah. You can go on to the second one, too. Oh, okay. You want me to go to the second one? Okay. So the second one was, uh, was actually dramatically different. And see, this is why I'm talking about how, you know, every session was almost helping me overcome my skepticism that uh, Sanjay talked about, you know, when he said, well, you know, we are going to cover this story of millions of Hindu Americans. So the second panel was all about the relationship and the really exciting growing opportunities between India and the United States. You know, for most of us, our homeland and our adopted homeland. And, uh, you know, there the, are the, a couple of things that crossed my mind. One was one of the panelists talked about the gap. He talked about uh, the magnitude of the, of the opportunity here. And so I was absolutely blown away that America is looking for 19 trillion of investments, and the total investment, American investment in India of date, is $800 billion. So I was thinking, what a massive opportunity it is for cross-border you know, investment here, and that was absolutely fascinating. Uh, then the other thing that I learned in that panel, which I'm sure all of you got, most of us think about technology, we think about industry, we think about oil and gas, but then one of the panelists actually talked about alternate uh, industries. He talked about bio industry, he talked about wind industry, and he talked about uh, the ability to create jobs in India and really transform the society, which was a very, very different way of uh, looking at cross-border uh, investments. And then, of course, we talked about the challenges, which I'll not really go into, but again, how to overcome these challenges. It was just a fascinating discussion of what really exists in terms of opportunities between both the countries. 
Want to go? Yep. All right. I'm ready now because I have my notes on this one. Um, the, the next panel was about the role of the Hindu American in the public sector, in the public sphere, and mostly in the civic uh, arena. And what, what I felt one is that is the establishment of Dharma, right? Um, it was eye-opening for me some of the challenges that the uh, various folks in the, in the panel ha were facing and will continue to face. And it was a, a fledgling group that has ventured slowly but in, inexorably to leading an active civic life. And we've heard uh, this often. Anyone who flies would hear this at the airports blaring away. This is when you see something, say something, right? And we generally take it very literally. It's like when we find something we don't like, we just complain incessantly about it. And then we walk away. And then the next time we see something, we complain and then we walk away. And what we don't realize is that that's not what it meant. It said, when you see something, do something, right? And so uh, I, think, I think the panel that uh, addressed the, the, their active role in the political sphere, those, those people were going to do something. And I thought that was a very phenomenal uh, panel uh, discussion. Uh, it, it, it said, uh, you know, there, there were quotes from a Mahabharata, and I will not repeat it, but there's a fundamental theme to the Mahabharata that talks about yato dharma dato jayaha. And uh, it translates, it actually goes yato dharma dato krishna, yato krishna dato jaya. But in short, it says that where there is dharma, there is victory. Uh, but it did not come by just sitting around or uh, or talking in conferences and just expostulating about the dharmic values. It meant that Arjuna had to pick up his uh, bow and arrow and actually go and fight and defend dharma. And a modern way of doing it is in two ways. We heard, a, we heard an amazing speaker talk about her way of uh, contributing to establishing dharma and protecting it. And we heard the panelists talk about how uh, they were going to protect dharma by uh, taking an active role in civic life. And so I think that's their way of establishing one of that purusharta, which is, uh, which is protecting dharma. So I thought that that, that panel uh, was pretty amazing in the various ways in which and they took every question, even the most tricky one that uh, came at them, and held it in their stride. So I was pretty amazed by it, and I'm sure that you would have appreciated the candor and their sharing of their own uh, faith and belief system as well. So that's about the, uh, the public uh, Great. life. Yeah. You want to go to the next one? Uh, the holistic uh, living? Yes, please. All right. So uh, the holistic living was, uh, this was the best way I can describe it. This was, this was really intriguing. I mean, you know, we have all talked about yoga and, uh, you know, I have talked about doing yoga for a long time, but it was really, really interesting to see all the, the theoretical aspects and different sides of yoga and then how yoga really, you know, crosses and how our behaviors cross with, you know, being vegan and vegan and then, you know, following naturopathy and how does it really come across as, uh, as something which can really impact, you know, things like clim clim uh, climate change. So it was, I thought it was a really engaging discussion. Uh, they were, I was frankly staggered to see some of the uh, clinical and objective data which was coming behind from the studies, right? Well, you know, so from things that we are talking about in yoga, you know, what are the benefits? We were talking about uh, uh, naturopathy and how some of the clinical results have come out. And uh, frankly, you know, again, the intersection of all these different sciences and then drawing it back to what really happens in India. How did these sciences grow up in India? I thought that it was really fascinating. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was, I think each panel just did better and better. And you, you went just when you thought that they have, they have uh, you know, reached the heights of what they could contribute to. And then the next panelist came up. And I thought the, uh, the panel on innovation and thinking outside the box was, uh, box was pretty amazing. Uh, I mean, the whole, the whole uh, team was, was incredible. They came with so much to contribute to and in their own way uh, shared with us that being in the pursuit of artha, right? Again, the theme of the four Purusharthas, um, they were focusing on creating opportunity. Yeah? And I mean, creating opportunity for themselves, as some of them said first, but then in the course of creating opportunity for themselves, creating opportunity for others through the various uh, entrepreneurial uh, ventures that they had all participated in. But the underlying theme of that was the pursuit of artha with a dharmic faith. You know, they may not have realized early on, like they must have, they, as they shared with us, they, they said that they did it because they believed that 
that's their way of giving, that's their way of sharing, right? But, but they did not talk about a lot is how that was governed by their upbringing and the environment that they were raised in. And uh, it was pretty amazing to hear each one of them. Uh, Deepak I had known uh, because his kids uh, went to Balvihar, uh, but the others as well, Ram and the others I've heard about and their participation and engagement and, and taking that opportunity that they have been given as being an entrepreneur, being able to make that change and harbinger of change was I thought was very impressive. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, value creation is the heart of any society, right? And, and just listening to the creativity, creativity and different paths that these entrepreneurs have taken on top of it, uh, they're linking up with some of the things that they're, they, they uh, learned from the Hindu heritage, right? I mean, the kind of things I heard about all the time were, uh, you know, work ethics and commitment and dedication, right? And, and really focusing on the basics. And the one new thing that I heard was, you know, somebody connected with Mahabharat and said, uh, actually, if you grew up in India, you don't have the fear of the unknown. That was remarkable, you know? I mean, uh, if you really think about it, an entrepreneur really jumps into an area of unknown, right? You don't know what is the business model, you don't know what is the operating model. And if you connect back to what our own dharma says, right? All you can, or, or our own dharma says, uh, all you can do is really do what you want to do, what is your duty, and then leave the results out. So I thought that was a great connection between, you know, our cultural heritage and, uh, and the real life uh, business environment that we live in today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the next panel was about the science of consciousness. And this is a topic that's very near and dear to my heart because I always wonder about the intersection of where science stops and consciousness, the knowledge and pursuit of this deep knowledge begins. And so, I mean, of course, the panels are eminent, Subhash Kakji and uh, Anand Venkatraman. That, the, that team was you know, mind-blowing in, uh, in their collective knowledge and experience about the science of the mind. Um, but then also they, they showed, they, they actually were open to, because we generally hear about the science as, as uh, exploration of the world outside. But, these, uh, but this team of panelists really explored uh, that science uh, of the world outside and the world within. And they went deeper and deeper and deeper and asking the, the the curiosity that leads them to truly understand where the well, the world, the material world that we're seeing around us is deriving its energy from. And so I thought that that talk about the atom uh, was was pretty uh, was pretty interesting as well. I can tell you that during that, just before that, and some of you may know, I was very jet lagged, and by that time I was on the waning moon, um, and and like literally, I <laughs> and figuratively, I woke up to the potential in me to stay awake through the rest of the day, and actually. The party went into very late at night, as some of you might know, we went and got coffee. Um, but what I realized from that panel is that the journey of the scientist from the realm of the known to unknown, right? That was what they talked about. The science is an exploration of facts as they perceive it with their eyes, ears, nose, and five senses. But they said there's something beyond this, and that's the pursuit of the known to the unknown, and which is where the wisdom of Vedanta is. So I thought the concept of jiva and jagat was really uh, well discussed by the group, but you, you know, using very technical terms. Um, but I felt like, I don't know about you, but I felt like I wanted to learn and understand a little bit more about it um, as we do. And if you are interested, you should go and learn a little bit more about the concept of jiva and jagat. There was anything to add there? Okay, all right. Okay, next comes, I thought was fantastic. I don't know if you, if you all agree, but you should if you weren't. Yeah. The lightning talks. What do you yeah. think of that one? Where, where, is, uh, where is Priya? You know, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where is, wow, Priya, take a bow. Wow. You know, it was incredible. And if there's one suggestion that I have about this conference, we need to start with that <laughs> next time around. But please go ahead, Maha, and I'll join. Yeah, I thought, I told Neeraji, so we were going to tag team, and I said, I just looked at it, and I didn't do the any mini. So I found out that it was Neeraj's turn to do the lightning talk, and I said, can we just do it together, please? Because I want to talk about all the girl power that I saw up on stage. And, uh, you know, again, here is this really cool thing that we teach kids in Baal Vihar, is that we talk about this three, the, the, the power of the female power, the girl power, there's t-shirts and everything that goes about girl power, but what does it actually mean in the Sanatana Dharma? And we, we teach the kids, you know, about the power of the Trimurthis, uh, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, and, you know, we find these images of them with their concepts. Sorts. And the kids don't really understand until you teach them that they can't do anything 
without their concepts. Brahma cannot create. You cannot create anything without the knowledge of what you're creating. And that's what Goddess Saraswati means, is the knowledge that's required to create. And you cannot sustain, as Lord Vishnu did, without the means to do so. Can you eat? Uh, can, you, can you sustain? Can you grow? Can you prosper without uh, the prosperity that's bad, material, physical, mental, wealth, and prosperity that Goddess Lakshmi brings? So it's not just the half. She's the means to be able to do the, the sustaining that Lord Vishnu did. And, and recycling, you know. <laughs> that, that part of uh, Lord, Lord Shiva is, is incomplete without Shakti. And so when we say girl power, it's not just being able to participate and engage, and, but truly to understand the potential that is hidden within a girl. So, and I thought I was simply blown away by, the, uh, by, the, uh, uh, by all of them, every one of them. I can, I can recall exactly what each of them spoke about. So six minutes, but six very compelling minutes of, uh, of uh, lightning talks. So I want to really, of all of the things, I want to really thank the, the organizers for actually making this particular thing happen. Any, right. Any no, questions? 19 women uh, out of 20. Oh my goodness, it was amazing that how young the crowd was. And for these kids to talk about their vulnerabilities, their search for identity, right? Uh, for them to talk about their uncertainties and how they're growing through it. Uh, it was remarkable. Looking at them, I kind of looked around and I said, wow, our future is in really good hands. Yeah. I, I will conclude on the, on the lightning talk by one little thing. I've heard very often um, the Monica attached to the kids that were born here. You know what that is? It's not a very flattering moniker. Hmm? A, B, C, D, right? And we use it without thinking that we've just We've just labeled these kids that were born here, and we consider them American-born confused daisies. And you know what? We will continue to call them that, but I want you to think about this one difference. They're no longer. Anyone agree that the girls, anyone there that would look appear, appeared confused about their identity? Uh, exactly. We are going to change that to American-born confident daisies going forward. Yep. So I you hear anyone say A, B, C, D, say yep. But C stands for confidence. Uh, our timekeepers are giving us some very dirty glances. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we know, you know. <laughs> That's why we take care of you guys. All right. So let's do this. We will move on to today. Mm -hmm. uh, you all have been here in this uh, session, so we'll go pretty quickly through this. Listen, on education, we, you know, you guys just rock. I mean, five such good educators talking about real-time problems, talking about. Uh, you know, challenges that they face talking about how they have used their heritage and everything that they have learned in India to bring those lessons to and build and start building and empowering and making the next generation more vibrant, more diverse, more inclusive. That was an incredible learning. That was an incredible experience. Uh, the one thing that I did take away and that I'll make a pitch for is what... Uh, one of the panelists said when they talked about supporting uh, the school system more, getting more involved in that, I absolutely wholeheartedly agree with that. Anilji, uh, I never knew all your struggles, which were absolutely touching. I knew you were a remarkable man, but my goodness, you know, uh, you had had such a great journey. <laughs> Terrific. It was great to hear that. So, uh, 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 Parolji was on it too, so I think you're going to get in trouble if you don't call her out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, and it was it was inspiring session. And then we came to the last one, right. uh, the philanthropy one. I, that that was not not just about philanthropy. It was it was a whole lot of things. I thought that that panel sort of wrapped everything together for us and put a bow on top. Do you agree? Right. I mean, we talked about raising funds, but we also talked about participation. It, it was, uh, for me, uh, uh, I, uh, I would like to hear more about that, that discussion a lot more. I think a whole day could be spent on just talking about, uh, about uh, giving back uh, in whatever way means possible. Uh, I was, I'm going to leave this with one final thought on, 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 the, uh, on the philanthropy part of it. Is, uh, is even though this is, uh, this is from Kabir, it still uh, explains to us how we should be looking at means Right? Uh, is, uh, I, my mom always used to say this when she taught me Hindi. Everything that I know about Hindi uh, was my, from my mom. And she, taught, she always used to say this, Sai itna dijiye jamai kutum smai, main bhi bukha na rahun, sadhu na bukha jai. Is, is when, we, when we 
collect and we keep and we hoard, right? And we give. It's not when that that symbolizes how we should be uh, looking at uh, our potential to earn, our potential to save, and our potential to give. And I think that sort of symbolizes what I heard from the team. Oh, but do it in a way that uh, uh, that one of the panelists talked about, which is you know go about it smartly. You know. Talk to people, understand where you're giving and why you're giving. So I think that wrapped it up for me uh, for the day. Of course, the keynotes were pretty amazing too. Neera, do you want yeah. to wrap it up? So uh, we are not going to say too much about our keynote speakers. It's like taking call to Newcastle. I mean, you have heard both of them. Uh, there's nothing we can say that that would exceed what both of them have said. So thank you so much. We really, really appreciate what you had to say. Uh, very quickly, we uh, can I just mm -hmm. so we talked about. Uh, we talked about uh, what we have done over the last, uh, you know, last two days, right? Now, let me take a show of hands here. Do you believe or do you think that we were able to achieve the goal that Sanjay Ji had laid out for us? And if not, then that's true too. Okay, good, good. I mean, it looks like everybody did. Look, let's just talk about uh, a few suggestions that our panelists made for the future that's important to touch on. The first thing, and I'll go really fast, guys, keep the glances down. Uh, the first thing, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The first thing, uh, one of the panelists made a very, very important point. Uh, they talked about how the need for connection, for network, for a community is almost a primal need. It's a fundamental need, right? And they talked about the context of how we should be thinking about a conference like this, right? So when they talked about the contents, context, when they talked about the values, it was all about things like humility, dedication, passion, strength of the community, strength of the family. Those were the words that we heard about, right? And Believing in your culture, trying to preserve your heritage, and taking faith in your community does not mean automatically that we are either insulting or we are take, looking a contentful view towards anything or anyone else. So we can absolutely take pride in what we are doing here today, which is just to reaffirm our values, our values of inclusion, of diversity, our values of all you know, the things that our panelists talk about. So that's one. The second thing is, um, if you heard during the advocacy panel, people talked about the need to continue. And to that extent, and I actually, I'll read out to you what one of our uh, panelists said. Sumit, you know, who was in industry and commerce, he said, be ambassadors of your uh, community. And that does not mean preaching at the holy pulpit of Hinduism. It means setting examples by your action and by your behavior, right? So that's the second thing I would say. We are all, all of us here carry a responsibility. And the responsibility is to go out and spread the message and be leaders of our community for ourselves, but more importantly, for our next generation. Let me come to the third point. And the third point, uh, you know, as uh, one of my favorite authors, Edward Hale, once said, uh, coming together is a beginning. Uh, keeping together is progress. And working together is success. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a beginning. Let's make it a success. Thank you. And I believe uh, the MC is going to come back. If you have enjoyed the three days, then you will definitely agree with me. See, in putting together a show like this, it takes a lot of hard work. And I really believe that it cannot be done if people don't come together as a team. And before we actually start with our concluding session, and we have two of the finest keynote speakers we have around here. So I won't take much time, but I definitely want to say this, that I want to introduce my team because they made it possible for me to look good. 
No, I'm being truthful. And people have appreciated the comments we have gotten back. Do you agree? Yes. So normally I do not carry my notes, but I don't want to lose anybody because I feel like everybody who has contributed should be recognized. And I want all of those team members, if they are here, if they are not, please come in. I will start with the concept development team uh, with the guidance of our mentor, our guide, the philosopher who has been leading the organization, uh, Dr. Abaya Stana. Unfortunately, he could not be here today, but I know he's watching us and we are missing him. And he has been this force behind all this. I would like to call uh, Dr. Jai Bansal, Dr. Ajay Shah. We don't have Dr. Sant Gupta or Utsav Chakravarti here, but we do have Mr. Sanjay Gupta as well here. Please come here, join us on the stage. I'll keep on calling people. Sanjay Mehta ji. I, I said Sanjay Gupta, see? <laughs> For, for the basic infrastructure that we put together, like accounts, the website, and other things, publications. Anit Gupta, Amitabh Mittal. For our communication and presentations that have been to put together, uh, the communication, media team, PR team include Lalit Kohl, Dhanashri, Upendra Mishra, Nimi Raj, Vandana Jingan, Geeta Patel, Nikhil, JJ, and if I am missing somebody, please walk up on the stage. For our AV team, Javed Wahid, and Mayapanji, please come up. We need you for a picture at least. Please come up. For our mobilization and outreach team, we have Ankur Sharma, Jagdish Tiwari, Neelab Shankar, Pramod and Alka Pandey, Brijesh and Bhavna Sharma. And the toughest job we had was fundraising. Vishu and Mona Khetan. And definitely, I would say, if you liked what you saw and are motivated to contribute, please do see either Vishuji or Anit Gupta ji. We are always open to receive donations. So, entertainment, uh, Shekhar Shastri ji. I'll call. Uh, food, how was the food? Food was provided by VAPS, in particular, Koshal Vyas and his team. I don't know if they are here. And also, the lunches were provided by Hilton. So we are thankful to them. We had a food a team that actually put the menu together and talked about how and what should be done. That included Mona Khetanji, Bela Kohl, Parul Kumar, Suman Sharma, Jaya Astana. For decorations, we had Anisha from Taranum uh, Creations. She somehow is not well, so she is not here. I know that, but she is part of the team. Photography, we had Neeraj Deswal, Navneet Sharma, Priyanka Jaiswal, and Paresh Motiwala. And many others, but these were the official photographers. For on-site management, we had uh, Mahapula, Sanjeev Tripathi, Neeraj Kumar, and Sangeeta Saxena. 
And if you were impressed by how each panel flew through their time and nobody exceeded their allocated time, then you have to give credit to my FLO stage management team. That team includes Ramji, Sanjayji, Ajayji, Ankurji, and Venkatji. Venkatji. If you like the exhibits we had outside, Sunanda Sahaji and Parveen Sahaji provided the exhibits. Rekha ji, please come and Mahesh ji, two of the people. I haven't yet come to the registrations. And the people who, uh, exhibits I talked about, the posters were creations of Jai ji and many others, but I am sure his wife, Santosh ji, was the key figure behind it. So I would like her to walk up the stage, yes. Chandra Reddy ji has been part and parcel of our poster team as well. If he's here, please walk up. Delegate management, the hospitality portion of it is Rajesh Bhutani. Rajesh ji, kaha hai aap aye? He also managed travel and transportation. And Raj Gupta. For my on-site management and registration, I have Ashwini Mishra ji, Rekha Parlawal, Sudha Bhutani, Preet Mittal, Amitabh Mittal, Mahesh Parlawal ji. If I missed anybody, please walk up. I am too overloaded to remember everything. We, we did talk about crisis management, and we are very thankful to Almighty. Nothing untoward happened, but the people who were supposed to help included uh, Dhananjay ji and Rajesh ji. They are here. I know they are here. They're still managing the crisis, I guess. <laughs> And Rajesh ji, please come. Gopika ji, Vivechana ji, Priya ji. See, they are prompting me. But I have a flow, actually. <laughs> I, I, now I am double-guessing myself. See, it, this could not have been possible if we did not have the right coordinators for every panel. I do need to mention the coordinators. For our arts and literature, we had Shekhar Shastri ji. For industry and commerce, we had Mukesh Agi ji. For public service and advocacy, Sohag Shukla. Technology and entrepreneurship, Mukesh Chatter. Medicine, Biotech, and Pharmacy, we had uh, Dr. Ravi Khanna ji. And Udit Batra ji was the moderator as well as coordinator. They both worked together. For our education panel, we had Parul Kumar as the coordinator and Dr. Uh, Amit Tandon as the moderator who put the panel together. For our holistic living, we had uh, Ram ji and Chandra ji, they worked together with Hillary as the moderator. For our service and uh, philanthropy, which was the last session of the day today, Kumar Nachur ji. We had two special sessions yesterday. One was led by Dr. Subhash Kak. He coordinated and put it together with Dr. Veer Anand. I think they have both left. And Priya Savanji for the lightning talk. And there are a couple of names I guess I forgot. Sanjay ji. <laughs> okay. So, I, I, I won't waste my 
esteem because we have the final session, the closing session, and we have two of the best keynote speakers, and the organization will also be represented. Please bear with us, do not go away. We will finish and wrap up on time, and then we will go downstairs for lunch. How about that? A big thank you to my team. Thank you. No, vote of thanks will come. Aap log ekdam preempt kar dete hain sab ko. So I, I think one more time, big cheer for Sanjay Kolji. Thank you so much, Neeraji, Mahaji, for your in uh, really in-depth conference summarization. I would like to call Mr. Sanjay Kaul upon the stage now, and please continue. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gopika. I'm good without this. So I have been assigned the task of uh, delivering the vote of thanks. But before I do that, I have to say this. I learned one thing from these two people. You should have your spouse as the timekeeper. <laughs> then you can go as long as you want. <laughs> I can't hold they myself. They gave us dirty looks. They were giving us. <laughs> yeah. We just chose to ignore it. <laughs> on, be on, on behalf of the World Hindu Council of America, the organizing team of Threats Conference, the management team, and the host team. It's my pride and privilege to thank you all as the delegates, as the speakers, as the panelists, and as the keynote speakers to have come to our first of its kind Threads Conference in Boston. Jaiji, as the convener of the conference, thank you so much for leading us through this planning process and execution process. Our keynote speakers, but before I talk about that, I do want to share that we did have some hiccups. One was we had ordered a souvenir bag with the logo and all. It did not get delivered in time. So that was one hiccup we had. The other one, one of the keynote speakers on the opening session had a family emergency. Governor Dukakis could not come. But despite those hiccups, I think we managed it very well. I want to thank our keynote speaker for the opening session, Sri Raji Malhotra ji, for an excellent opening for this conference. I want to thank Tahir Gora ji for coming all the way from Canada and giving us closing remarks, which were actually very befitting for this conference. Sri Darshak Soni ji, uh, Darshak Hathi ji, who is actually traveling in U.S. Uh, on behalf of the Art of Living Foundation and was kind enough to come here and share his guidance for us for future for the Threads Conference. I also want to acknowledge the presence of Mrs. Gora. Thank you so much for being part of this conference. We definitely have to acknowledge the facility that has been provided by Hilton Hotel. They have been very, very cooperative. I, I think as Hindus, as Indians, we have to bring business to such places which acknowledge and accommodate because certain of our things are very different. We do not respect time. <laughs> but they were accommodating. So I want to definitely thank them for that. I also want to thank 
BAPS for excellent food. I think food for thought is necessary, but it cannot be given if your stomach is empty. And they did an excellent job with the menu, with the preparation, and with their execution of the delivery. Very, very good. I don't know if they are here, but they deserve a very big hand. The decorations that you saw were done by Anisha. Unfortunately, she fell sick. She is not here, but I definitely want to acknowledge her contribution for the whole <laughs> conference. Our photographers, I named them earlier, but please give them a big hand. <laughs> Our media partners, including Lokwani, India New England, Gunjan Radio, Radio Music India, help promote the conference in the local Boston area, and there are many journalists in the audience who helped us. Thank you so much. I also want to acknowledge TV Asia. Vanna Jingan is here covering for TV Asia. The Hindu Media Bureau, Dhanashri. If you have not given an interview to any of these two people, please make sure at least you give sound bites about this conference. We do need everybody's opinion. If you are satisfied, please say so. If you found something lacking, please do bring that to our attention. To make us better in future, we need every opinion that can be available. Thank you. I also want to acknowledge Acton TV. They also helped us promote this event, and they were here. Their staff was here. Thank you so much. Our AV, again, I named them for video recording for all audio help. Thank you so much. <laughs> Most thanks go to the panelists, all of who made sure they were here on time and they adhered to time. That was the best part of it. <laughs> Our speakers, and they were not 20, they were 13, one male and 12 females. Oh. They look like they were 20. <laughs> Their voices. <laughs> yes. Our transportation team in particular, Jagdish and Raj Gupta ji did a lot of work. Thank you very much. Every evening we had a press release for last two nights. Thanks to Lalit Kohl, he made sure that we have a press release going out every evening. Thank you, Lalit. <laughs> we had two authors who had come here with their books for book signing. Mr. Robert Arnett and Phil Goldberg. Their books are still available. It's on our part that we were not able to promote book signing. They are still here. Books are still available. Please make sure during the lunch, if you would like to talk to them, have a picture with them, have a signed book from them, please do so. They're doing it as a service to VHPA. Uh, the contributions are going to VHPA, and those are great books they have written. Please do that. I did mention that we did not get bags in time, but the bags that were provided were by Priya Samant. She did an excellent job as a friend. She came and helped me save the day. Thank you so much. Finally, nothing can be done without the presence of delegates. I know I don't have many there, but first day, second day, we had like 350, 400, and we could not have made this conference a successful conference unless everybody participated and interacted. And the, the tagline for this was to share our story, to, to engage the American society, the Hindus, the non-Indians, and those of the Hindus, uh, non-Hindus and non-Indians who were here, I thank them very much. And in particular, I want to thank Mona Khetanji. She made an enormous effort, at least to, in the New England region, to reach out to every educational institution, every other organization, and every other ethnic background, uh, communities of different backgrounds, so that we invite them to come. I know it's a long road, it's not easy, uh, many people do not read emails, many people do not feel like they would want to interact, but I think what we have achieved this time 
the word will spread and next time it will be easier for us to engage the other people as well. So uh, finally, nothing can be done. And I want to acknowledge the presence of certain people here. Mr. K.C. Prahlad, he has been a friend. Thank you so much, always being part of us. Um, Shri Vivek Sharmaji, a very big supporter of ours. We have uh, Hemanti ji and Kanchan Banerjee ji. They have been <laughs> backbone of the whole hard work that goes in. Sri Amit Kanodia ji has been a very helpful and supportive. Uh, Sudhir Parikh ji. Uh, uh, Parmeet Makode ji, he is also here. Came back from India just for the conference. Uh, Anupam and Neelam Waliji being part and parcel and supportive of our uh, efforts. Uh, Ranjani Saigal ji and Suresh Sharma ji. And I am sure I have missed many more names. And Parveen ji and Sunanda ji in particular, I want to thank for all your help. And with that, thank you so much. I don't want to come in between you and the food we have. Thank you so much to all those who came from 29 different states in the country to participate and make this a very, very successful event. We are proud of you as proud Americans and as proud Hindus. Thank you so much. Namaste.